Hey everyone, my name is Kristen and welcome. I'm currently in my second semester of nursing school. It is almost coming to a close. I have finals right around the corner, so I did just want to take you along to my pharmacology class just so you can see how it is set up, as well as how I do my online study guides and my handwritten drug cards. Now I do do a hybrid approach for this class just because there's so much information. I'm not able to handwrite everything. I am in an accelerated program. So time is ticking and I have so much information I need to learn for the summer semester. So I try my best to handwrite everything if I can, but if I don't have time, I will make a study guide on my computer. So if you're interested in going to class with me as well as learning how I take my notes and all the information that I have on these drug cards, just keep watching. It's currently about 7.30 in the morning. It is a beautiful Wednesday outside. Now, today I do have my four-hour pharmacology class, so I am planning on taking you along on how my day goes in my farm class, as well as how I set up my notes, because I actually do set up my notes just a tad bit differently for pharmacology, just because I do make drug cards. So, what a typical day looks like for me, especially on a Wednesday with farm, is I will get up around 6.37. Now I am so used to waking up around 5 a.m. to go to clinicals that I've just been getting so used to waking up early. And normally I do like to have some quiet time before I do go to class. But last week in farm, we did have an exam. And because of that, my professor did decide to put an online lecture for us. So I do have to watch that online lecture before I get to class today, just so I don't fall behind. So that is where I'm going to start is watch the online module and then I will go to class and then after class I will discuss all the good details on what we were talking about, how I set up my notes, and how I make my drug cards. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the online module. So this is currently what my computer screen looks like right now. Um, I do have the GI Disorders PowerPoint pulled up. And I do, as you can see, have the little microphone. So this is the recorded part that I have to go through and listen to. And what I do is I actually type out all my notes down in this bottom section right here, just so all my notes are in one place. So my professor has it laid out where we first go over the specific disorder that we're talking about or condition, and they will go over kind of the pathophysiology, like what causes it, why it happens, who's affected, and then we will go into the different drugs that are used to treat that condition. This specific PowerPoint is geared towards disorders of the upper GI tract, which include peptic ulcer disease, which is actually caused by a bacteria called H. pylori, and then um, gastroesophageal reflux disease, which is also GERD. So there are just a few drugs that I went over, such as Prilosec, which is over the counter, as well as Zantac, some antacids, and I'm not sure if you've heard of antiemetics, but Zofran is actually prescribed whenever an individual is having nausea or vomiting. So this is pretty much all the information that we go through during class, and when I get to my drug cards, I will specify what I need to know for each drug. So I just finished that online lecture for farm. It did take me about 40 to 50 minutes to get through, so I do have just a little bit of time before class starts. Now I'm just going to go probably make a smoothie and then come back and then I will get started with my lecture. All right, now that I have my smoothie, let's go ahead and get logged into my class. So the structure of my live lecture is the same as the online lecture that I have. We go over the disease states and then talk about the drugs that go with those conditions. So we did talk about Alzheimer's as well as seizures and we did go over anti-infectives, which are also antibiotics, and then antivirals. There were so many drugs that I learned in the past four hours that I do know I'm going to have to put some time aside to learn all these drugs, but that is why I do my drug cards. It is just a great way for me to visualize all the information and take time to really learn it as well. But any information that is not specific to one drug that my professor did state that we needed to know does end up in my online study guide. Just gotta love technology. My professor's computer just went down, so now I'm having to reload Zoom and 
<sighs> exactly what I need on a day where I have a four hour class because I don't wanna spend any more time in class, you know? I now have a 10 minute break. Yes, this four hour class can be super long, super draining, and very hard to stay focused for the full four hours. So I'm just gonna go grab a snack and get some water and then get right back to class. So I did just decide to make a sandwich. <laughs> the sandwich looks so weird. Oh, I just did put a lot of arugula in there, but it's just turkey with pepper jack, tomatoes, banana peppers, and then a lot of arugula, I guess. I was feeling the greens today. I just finished class. It is about one o'clock in the afternoon. Class started at 9 a.m. So after being thrown all that information at me, I'm going to take a break, probably like an hour, hour and a half break, just to like sit down and just recharge because let me tell you, it's very hard to get into wanting to do homework after that four hour class. But I do know if I give myself like that hour, two hour break, I'll be a little bit more motivated to go into doing some homework. And I will be spending the rest of my evening making my drug cards. Now I do have a lot of drug cards and these probably do take me about like 30 to 50 minutes each depending on how much information is in one drug card. But you know, I do have all the relevant information that I need on both front and back and I actually utilize these in my clinicals as well. So I'm not just making them just for one purpose, I am making them for different classes to utilize too. So I am putting the time and effort into doing this. So in this case, I don't have to pull out my phone during clinical to get my drug guide out. All I have to do is just pull out my drug card that's going to have all the information that I need on the drug that I'm currently looking up. So I am going to go ahead and go step by step on how I make one of these drug cards. Now, like I said, they do take a little bit, but I promise if you end up following some sort of format that's similar, you will have all the information that you need right here in all your cards. So let's go ahead and start making some drug cards. Prilosec is the drug card that I'm gonna be working on right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So I did realize after making this video that this specific frame was not in focus, but I am gonna show you a close-up so you can go ahead and screenshot that and have it for your own reference. On the front of the drug card, I will put the generic name in cursive followed by the trade name highlighted in gray. This is continuous throughout my drug cards just so I can easily differentiate the names. Now underneath the name, I will put the drug classification in a little notepad and I will actually put the usual dosage underneath that and I will distinguish if there is a specific disease, state, or condition that needs maybe more more or less of the drug as well. On the right hand side of the front of the drug card, I will put the other drugs in the same class followed by the indications, so the specific disease or condition we are trying to treat. Then I will also put the mechanism of action, which in my opinion, the mechanism of action is one of the most important things you need to know about a drug. If you know the mechanism of action and how it affects someone's body, you are able to most likely predict the side effects. And a lot of the times this just happens to be a test question that pops up just for your information. And last but not least, I also put the pregnancy category because it is so important to know if the drugs are safe for a woman if she is pregnant. So this is how my drug cards look. Feel free to go ahead and take a screenshot if you like the layout of it. I really just try to keep it very basic with the color. I do just like to stick with one color for each drug card and then accent with the gray. And like I already said, I do have all the relevant information that is most important on the front of the drug card. Now, in the case of if I do have something that really needs to stand out, like a nursing implication, or maybe this drug happens to be the first line of defense that we always choose, I will go ahead and put it in the upper right hand corner and I am going to show you furosemide just to give you an idea of where I put this information and I will make sure to separate that information out by a little squiggly line underneath. I do try my best to make sure that I keep everything in its own little section just so I am able to distinguish the information. Now moving on to the back of the drug card, this is where I will put the route, so whether or not a patient might take this orally or if we have to give this through an injection or IV. I also put the onset, so how long it takes for the drug to work, as well as the duration of action, so how long the drug will work for. I also put who the drug is contraindicated for, so this just means that this specific population of individuals cannot take the drug, as well as the adverse effects, so if there are any like major side effects. And then I also do put the nursing implications, 
conditions. So this is just things that nurses really need to look out for. So these are just things that the nurses really need to be monitoring or assessing when a patient takes this kind of drug and then the patient education. So if you're sending a patient home on a specific medication, you may need to educate them on certain signs and symptoms or when to call the doctor. I mean, there's a list of so many things we need to tell the patient. I do try my best to simplify this information as much as I can, just so I'm not overloading the back of my note card. Alrighty y'all, this is the back of my note card. Once again, feel free to take a screenshot if you like the layout. Normally my handwriting's a little bit better than this. I was scribbling pretty fast to get through this note card so I could put this video together, but I did wanna give you a good general overview of what my note cards normally look like. Now, if I feel like I need to explain why an adverse effect happens because I'm not quite understanding the mechanism of action or maybe this adverse effect is just very random and I wouldn't expect it to happen, I actually will write a little note to myself next to the actual adverse effect. So I do elaborate when I need to. However, I do try to keep it as basic as possible. Now I'm just shifting over to my computer to work on the rest of my farm notes. The way that I set up my notes is exactly the same way I set up my handwritten notes. I am going to follow an outline method. And what I will do is I will take the title of each slide set that I have and make that its own main point. So all I do is I go through each of the PowerPoint slides and I make each PowerPoint slide a subtitle and try my best to group all that information together just so I have all that relevant information within the slide together. The information that goes into this study guide is not anything that's related to my drug cards. So each drug card is its own drug. So I try to keep all that information together with the drug Whereas if I have any extra information that wasn't covered like the disorders or any information that my professor wanted to talk about within like the GI tract or any of these diagrams that have important information underneath, all of this is what gets into this study guide. All the information that goes with my drug cards does not get included in here. Okay, so when I'm done with this, it should look something like this towards the end. Now I do have just some extra information written up here of kind of what kinds of questions were gonna be on the exam, how many select all that apply that I just randomly added in. But as you can see, I definitely have that outline method going on. Um, I tried my best to keep it as consistent with my handwritten notes just because I do like to keep things the same. That's what helps me study. It's very effective for me. But I will just go down and add in all the relevant information underneath that topic. And as you can see, the drug regulation is the next slide set. So I will go ahead and add any important photos that my professor tells me I need to know. I will highlight any information my professor told us is important. Like on this exam, we had 10 math questions and I highlighted it to remind myself to go over the math worksheet. So I do like this outline method. It is just what works best for me, but I know some individuals like to do it another way. Um, you could do graphs, charts, things like that. I just prefer to keep it very consistent and try to keep the photos next to the information that's relevant. So this is what my exam one study guide looked like. And then what I will do is like I said, I will have drug cards specific for each drug. We'll have all the information on it. So, so that is all that I have left for you in this video today. I really hoped you enjoyed the content and going to class with me as well as seeing how I set up my drug cards. Now I do just wanna say if you liked the video, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe as well. I'd also love to hear any recommendations that you have below. Go ahead and just put it in the comment section. And then of course, good luck to you on wherever you are in your nursing journey.